those uncomfortable memories uh, with, uh, with, with, with the, the consciousness of those alive, uh, perhaps even sometimes opening up a conversation between the living and the dead. So let me begin, first of all, by welcoming uh, some people here who are only with us in spirit. Uh, I think of people who would have been honored and who are being honored uh, later on, Jessica Huntley, uh, who we will honor in a moment. Uh, some people who we, we are at the risk of forgetting, like Lionel Jeffries and Pansy Jeffrey, who we buried last year, who made an, had an absolutely pivotal role in uh, Windrush Britain uh, and in the black British experience uh, in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, and I think also of Officer Wilson Harris, uh, who died, of course, uh, in March of this year. I also would like to honor some of the, the Guyanese spirits who have fertilized this country's soil, even if only in passing. And I think here of my father, uh, Harold Drayton, uh, who died also uh, this March. Uh, and I think of the writer E.R. Braffitt uh, from Sir With Love, uh, the painter Donald Locke, uh, and the historian Walter Rodney. The dead are the companions of all honest living. 70 years ago, in 1948, the British Parliament passed the most extraordinary law called the Nationality Act. This law created a status called the Citizen of the United Kingdom and Colonies, which was supposed to bind together the citizens of the entire empire. It created for the first time in the history of that empire the idea of some, some kind of simultaneity of status and equality of civic status, if only briefly. And it was in the light of this moment of optimism that that, that that generation, which we call the Windrush generation, came to Britain. That piece of legislation was the product of the politics of socialism after the Second World War, a product of the experience of common sacrifice after the Second World War. It has to be said also that it also reflected some of the politics of race which preceded that war, because of course the real beneficiaries of this act were never intended to be us. Uh, the original benefit, the real beneficiaries of, of this act were intended to be the Australians, the Canadians, uh, and the white South Africans. Now, the Windrush generation brought its hope and energy to this land and uh, attempted to realize some of this promise. I'd like to juxtapose this event in 1948. Of course, when this bill is being debated in Parliament in June of 1948, across the world uh, on Enmore Plantation in the east coast of Demerara on the 15th of June, uh, the strikers of the Guyana Industrial Workers' Union, the trade union, the fighting trade union which was organized by Chedi Jagan, whose centenary we, re we remember this year. Uh, that, uh, the, the, the striking workers at Enmore were massacred uh, by a detachment of uh, the forces of order. That event, the Enmore Massacre, uh, which I'm sure many Guyanese in this room who are younger will know nothing of, uh, uh, was a critical event in the origin of the national movement. So we have these two paradoxical events on either side of the world. Now, that, what, happened, what, it, what happened to East Coast de Amorara was a better indicator for what was to follow in the relations of Guyana and Britain than the speeches in Parliament. Uh, between 1953-1964, as many of you will know, uh, Guyana played, uh, Britain played uh, quite a dark role uh, in the tragedy of Guyana. Uh, in suspension of the Constitution of Guyana. Uh, it will be now 65 years ago next month. Uh, and in the fomenting of the racial cleavage in national politics between Indians and Guyanese. Uh, and later on, the production of a campaign of terror uh, and destabilization, which would lead, in fact, to the collapse uh, of civil order on several occasions in the 1950s and 1960s. We must remember that many of our most illustrious Windrush uh, era arrivals, like Jessica and Eric Huntley and Lionel Jeffries, who were all, let us not forget, while Afro Guyanese were stalwarts of the PPP. Lionel Jeffrey to his death. Last time I saw him, in fact, he was welcoming Chetty Jagan at an event of uh, Caribbean Labour Solidarity in London. Now, they came here as political refugees. So we have this paradox that Britain provides, as George Lamming puts it in one speech. Uh, the paradox of being at the same time the power which had created the conditions which forced these people to migrate, and yet provided this space of safety, which they were then able to make new lives. And we need to kind of keep in mind some of the kinds of the paradox and the contradictions in that relationship. Certainly in the wake of this period, uh, we can see the very rapid closing of that Windrush moment. 
And some of the figures who were involved in that uh, closing, of, in that dark period of Guyana, Guyanese politics, I think of a man called Duncan Sands, uh, were also responsible for the tightening of the politics of immigration uh, in the late 1950s. And what we have is a series of laws, 1962, 1971, which introduces the noxious notion of patriality, the idea that your children are not British unless their grandparents are British. A wonderful law if you happen to be born in Kenya or uh, Rhodesia with an English grandparent. Not a wonderful law if you happen to be Guyanese born in Britain uh, of, a, of a Guyanese parent. So 1971 and then culminating the 1981 uh, Immigration Act, which is the foundation uh, of the current law. And these laws in together turn Guyanese from being the fellow citizens of the British under the 1948 dispensation into becoming a special class of foreigners. Now, while there are people in power today in this country who bear a special responsibility for fomenting the hate of migrants and the persecution of the undocumented members of the Windrush generation, let us be clear that it is the betrayal of the promise of the Nationality Act of 1948 in the 1960s and 70s by both Labour and Conservative parties and the way in which political parties after that, uh, in which I, I'm afraid I have to include in some ways New Labour, collaborated with the politics of xenophobia, that is ultimately to blame for this particular moment. We should not forget that the Windrush migrants made their homes here in the midst of forms of adversity and hostility, which we now scarcely remember. But in spite of all these difficulties then and now, Guyana poured a rich tribute onto the soil of this country. And the names and achievements of Arthur Torrington, uh, Arif Ali, uh, Joyce Trotman, Roy Saw, Peter Kempadu, Yehudi Webster, uh, and many others, I, th I thought of the name Clyde Lloyd, who well, may well have been honored on a previous occasion, uh, will be always remembered. The Windrush migrants from all over the Caribbean, uh, but in particular from Guyana, changed Britain forever. And one of the most wonderful aspects of the Windrush crisis earlier this year was that the two key figures who were involved in, in creating the public campaign, which led to a complete reversal of the policy of the previous three years, were two people who were born in Britain of Caribbean origin. Uh, my school friend Guy Hewitt, the Barbados uh, High Commissioner, now departed, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, um, the, the, the MP for Tottenham, uh, David Lamy. The Windrush experiment is still continuing. Those of you who know uh, the, the poem Colonization in Reverse uh, will recognize that what we've been engaging in in this country is a kind of colonial experiment. But this is a colonial experiment which is unlikely ever to end. Thank you very much.